call this meeting to order. Will everyone please join us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, at this time I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes for the February 19th regular meeting, February the 20th, a special meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Wilson and Mr. Baker. Uh, and all yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, public comment. Anyone sign in, Bill? No, sir. Thank you. Okay, under presentations and reports, we have Mr. Miller from the CTE program. start and go through all of uh, what I want to share with you guys today. Uh, I have Mr. Jones and his welding students here and they would like to present something other to the board. Okay. So Jim. We've got this um, with our new CNC machine we cut this out and we'd like to present this to you to say thank you for donating money to the program for the CNC machine. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. What do you want me to set this up? Here, I'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> that one I do. Looks good. Yeah. Well, if it just had a big fly WV on there. We're working on that, sir. Huh? We're working on that. <laughs> we, yeah, that's, what yeah, about we, Marshall? We're probably now so down 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 yeah. 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 That's very nice. I'm buying that. That is a one. It's aluminum. It's aluminum? Yes. We can cut stainless, aluminum, copper. Anything else? Nice. We have uh, multiple uh, yeah. things we can cut out. We can cut out anything you can think of. That machine. Be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they, do, they do a good job, but well, it, it has lots of capabilities. Yeah. I think you guys will learn about CAD as well. Mm -hmm. um, before we didn't have the, uh, the piece of equipment, so this would have been just something you know, kind of forward to them once they get out of here and they get into the workforce. Um, now they have an opportunity to uh, you know, pick up a few extra skills um, that I believe will help them once they get out and get them jobs. Is that a water jet? A cup of water? No, it, it cuts with it a wheels, yeah. router type bit. Yes, plasma arc. Oh, okay. But it's a good one then. Uh, yes. yes, it's a 51,000 <laughs> degree arc that cuts uh, so quickly it doesn't leave any heat trace on the metal. Wow. Does really? it? Take you long to do one like that? Carl, it can take a couple of minutes to build a massage you want. They, they, they learn you know, how to do things and overlap, and you know they know what X and Y, and well, we have Z in there too. Mm -hmm. so. Why don't you make them and sell them? We are doing that. Uh, we're using it for donations for our program and for uh, skills. That's great. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you all. We just want to show our appreciation. I got you. Good look at it. Ordering some new material today, so. Yeah. But it is, they, they got capabilities to do all kinds of things now. Uh, they just had a field day with tinkering with uh, little things. And they made me a sign uh, to put on my driveway. And I told him, I said, well, you guys could make that out of a little bit thinner metal. And I think they used, I don't know, if it was like three eighths. It was heavy. I was like, oh, my goodness. They're like, we wanted it to last. So they were just playing around with it, trying to figure out what they could do with the metals and so forth. Yeah. That is. Um, all right, I'll, I'll uh, 
start through covering a bunch of things here. Uh, if you turn to the first page, you'll see that uh, I have that title as Visitors. And the reason I have that title as Visitors is that it was over the last, well, since the last time I came to talk um, to the board, we've had a huge interest um, from folks in Lincoln County High School because of our CTE program. Um, when I talked uh, to you before, I told you we were on the verge of becoming a model school, uh, which we we achieved that. Um, my goal is now is to move us to what's called a diamond school, and that's getting every program uh, on board and, uh, and following uh, certain criteria that's set forth by the uh, Department of Ed. Uh, recently, we've had folks from the Kentucky Valley Education uh, Committee. Um, Nicole Stanley, she's from Wynn. She wanted to come and see the simulated workplace. Um, the folks from Kentucky have uh, emailed me and would like me to come down and do a uh, presentation to uh, their high school administrators on simulated workplace. Um, it's, um, I think it's around Hazard, Kentucky. I told the guy I'll get back with him. Um, we had some folks from the Salem City School District came in May. They came back and seen us in September. Um, they love what we do, so they are modeling RCTE, Simulated Workplace, um, now at the Salem City School District in, in Virginia. Um, Appalachian Regional or uh, Commission or um, ARC, they came and visited. Uh, they have asked me to do a, uh, come to a national education conference in Florida uh, in about a week to do a presentation on Lincoln County High School and our career tech ed, uh, things that we do. Um, our kids have done a fantastic job talking to these folks. And I'm usually, I don't do a lot of talking with them when people come to visit us because it's not about me, it's about the kids. And they understand what we're trying to do and with the simulated workplace. Um, and once they start talking, it, it, people just seem to fall in love with them. So I'm really, really impressed with them. Uh, Mountaineer Challenge came and visited with us. They uh, had also expressed an interest for me to come and do a training for some of their folks on uh, simulated workplace. I've had people from Wayne and Cabell, Mingo, Mason and Logan, Pleasance County. I've worked on an agreement with uh, Stan Watch Academy and several of our kids have a, a golden opportunity to uh, uh, learn about entrepreneurship and a business plan and, and I'll talk more about that later. Like that's on the agenda. That is on the agenda, program. yes. I've seen you had Jessica and I on the agenda to go to Florida as well. Well, thank you guys for that. Um, the Department of Ed came and seen us a number of times. Um, Chris Miller from Dutch Millers. And I'll share a little bit about uh, opportunities that we have there with them. Um, Angela Miller, she had no relation to me, but uh, she's with Apple Education, and uh, they would like to do a uh, hopefully investment in our kids, and I'll share a little bit of that with you uh, coming up. And uh, I spoke last week at the CTE conference uh, on what we do at Lincoln County High School. Now I have folks from uh, Preston County, Monroe, Ohio, and Kathleen McNally, which is with the SREB, um, want to come and visit us. So we seem to be a hot topic for everybody. Uh, on the next page, uh, or El Ciado, and I was talking a minute ago about meeting with Chris Miller. What I ended up uh, being able to achieve out of this is that we have uh, had the opportunity for a couple of our kids to interview. Uh, and we had started an apprenticeship program with Dutch Millers. We have two of our students, William Loftus and Brad Aggins. They are um, doing an internship basically through the end of the school year, and hopefully this will lead them into a job. Um, Dutch Millers had eight positions that needed to be filled. So uh, we had folks from Cabell County Career, Putnam County, um, different places, uh, Kanawha County, that applied. And, and I was real tickled that you know, we had eight slots, but two of our students were selected. I mean, that, that's saying a lot. Um, those guys had, had been working and finished up their ASE certification test. 
uh, but they are also um, certified to do vehicle inspections. So they were pretty much, a, I guess, a shoe in for, for what they wanted to do down there. And that's been exciting. The good thing on the outcome of this is that if these guys continue to work with them and they get a job offered at, at the end of the school year, um, Chris Miller's willing to buy them uh, like $1,000 worth of tools to help get them started. So there's a, there's a little incentive for, for our guys in the end. And, and they actually love doing this. Now, how did these two get chosen to be? They actually filled out an application and had to do it uh, just a normal process like you would for, for any job. They, they did an interview, um, and that's part of what, what we do with simulated workplaces. The kids have to interview for their, their positions and, and you know apply for them, um, just like you would in the real world, and, and that's how they got chosen. Um, Ed Adventure Group um, contacted me. They have a uh, um, an opportunity that they wanted to, uh, to come and share leadership skills with some of our students. Um, the gentleman that I've been talking back and forth with um, would like to come this spring and choose 25 to 30 of our um, CTE students and do training on leadership um, skills because those are the folks who are going to be out of here for a long and into the real workforce. <clears throat> He's also agreed to do leadership training to the staff. Um, and he's just focused on the CTE staff right now. And the Adventure Group, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, they've been around for a long time, and um, one of their goals is to, to help students, um, inspire them to become lifelong learners, and also be able to work with them to learn some skills so that when they get out into the real world, they can be productive. Um, they have a little bit of money, and Glad they want to share it with us. Is this gentleman with Adventure or is this someone that works? Yeah, he is with Adventure, yes. Um, Legacy Towers uh, came and talked with the uh, seniors in welding and carpentry. Uh, they've got some spots opening. Um, he'd take people now if he could get them, but uh, they're having, I guess, trouble hiring folks that can show up for work, pass a drug test. Uh, so I told him that, uh, I said, well, one good thing is, you know, we keep track of attendance here so I can share that with you. I said, we drug test because of, uh, I said, that's a requirement for the state. And, and he was uh, happy to hear that. So he spent about an hour and came out, uh, spoke with our students, and uh, gave them an idea of where they would start at and how they could work their way up. Um, B.J. Miller is the uh, uh, the gentleman, and they have the business in Salt Rock. <clears throat> this is the next one. There is on a podcast, and this is kind of funny because I get an email out of the blue, and this guy Ben uh, Rowley had sent me an email. He heard about Lincoln County High School on a plane. Can't remember where he was said he was flying to. But he heard about us. So he ended up looking us up and I believe gives me a call. Um, I answered his email back and then we talked for a little bit. He's a newspaper editor and he's in Nevada. And he wants to find out what's how does simulated workplace work in, in a rural setting. So I brought the kids in and we did a, a podcast with him. And they all shared with they, with with him their uh, their roles and responsibilities within their company and their business. Um, so we ended up, being, ended up being a two part um, feature with this gentleman. And uh, I kind of thought that was neat when he was explaining the story. And he was like, Yeah, I was on a plane, I was flying. And he said, Start talking about, you know, what he does. And then the guy, um, I guess, been to, I don't know, maybe West Virginia Department of Ed or something. Or other. But somehow they ended up finding out about us and then he calls. And so uh, we did a podcast. Uh, with them. The kids loved it because they actually got to hear themselves. Uh, the guy sent that back to us and, and, and they were happy to share um, with him and now he has a, a different view about uh, rural education in, uh, in West Virginia. <clears throat> the next one is on Apple Education that I mentioned a moment ago. Angela Miller, she's the, uh, the K-12 Senior Executive, uh, Account Executive for Apple Education. 
she brought with her um, Dr. Kate Hemker. She's the National Development Ex Executive for Apple Education. She is actually out of the New York office. They came and, and, uh, and met with me and, and about 20 of our students. And one of their goals is uh, they would like to be able to uh, improve CTE because the kids were explaining to them because we run a company that each one of our companies operate up similar but in ways different than another one. So they want to work with us and possibly do one-on-one uh, -on -one iPads for all of our CTE students and they have an uh, interest in investing in uh, uh, MacBooks for uh, our CTE staff members. And they want um, our students to work with them on creating some like apps that would make any CTE program run better and smoother. <clears throat> so I was, I was kind of excited about that. Um, they're actually working with the, the Department of Ed right now and trying to figure out how they can do this. They sent me an invoice of what they thought it would cost. Um, the invoice was $273,000. So they have asked the uh, Department of Education for some money to cover that and they will cover the other cost. So I'm hoping this works out. I'm curious to see if how it plays out, um, because one they looked at doing possibly the whole building with iPads for everyone. Um, but I didn't get a quote on that, but I'm hoping this turns out to be something something really good for our students. But the deal was, I think, in, in four years, um, we would trade those back in or do an upgrade, and uh, so they wanted the uh, State Department on board uh, to help out down the road. Uh, Panther Publishing. Um, I mentioned on the first page there about our, our visitors coming from uh, Stanwatch Academy. And it's a nonprofit organization. It's located in the Tays Valley area. And basically, um, it's run by veterans. And a guy out of the blue calls me and he says, Hey, I think I have an opportunity for you. Um, he said, I, I was talking with Clinton Birch at the Department of Ed. And Clinton says, I need to get in touch with you. And uh, so we sit down and, and we talk. He comes out and visits with me. And uh, one of the things that he wants to do, and he's been working with our kids to make this happen, is um, he's teamed with a gentleman from uh, Marshall University in marketing and business. And he wants to um, students to think and do an entrepreneurial project, which means they come up with a business. And he's been working with them and showing them how, how you start the business, everything from, from the ground up, the first thing you do to where you present this to, to a group. And our kids have been working really hard. When he was telling me um, about this, my first thing is, you know, what's it going to cost? And, uh, and he says, well, I've got about seven or $8,000 that I would like to invest in your kids. So I thought, well, that's probably going to be good. Well. He had three other school districts that he had been in touch with, and they couldn't get anybody to represent their kids because he had to have somebody to represent them and somebody to come as a chaperone when they when they do these uh, uh, working on these plans and they're going some you know, going places. Um, so we were lucky enough to have Miss Frazier, um, who stepped up to the plate and says, "Yeah, I'll take you know this many kids." So we have eight now, and possibly going to have ten. Um, we started with six. I think it was eight, now we have ten kids that Sky's willing to, to help out. When I talked with him, he said, well, since the other schools uh, are not interested in, you know, working with their students, he said, what I can do is I have $16,000. I'll take care of your kids. That was great. I was like, you know, we can probably do this. So she came out and we had a parent night and, uh, and everything. Uh, actually, they're going to do a documentary about um, kids in simulated workplace, how they came about coming up with an idea and starting from scratch and working it through to come up with a business idea and a plan to sell it um, to folks. So they have an opportunity coming up um, to go to Colorado and present this idea um, to business leaders. And so I'm hoping that this, this carries on to something big for some of these kids. Mike, yes. will this continue into subsequent years or is this a one-time opportunity? 
Uh, we're hoping that this will continue. That's our agreement with the, with the gentleman. If things go fine, um, he would definitely like to look at possibly bringing us back on board next year and doing some things with our students as well. Now, this, uh, something like this, do you have to run by the state board? No. It's just up to you and Mr. Mick here. Yeah. I mean, it's all expenses, right? Like he's covering the cost of everything. Like yeah. For these kids to go to Colorado. And everything but the food. I'm going to take care of that. I have money for that. It's a great opportunity to you know, experience yeah. other students. Oh, I know. I know. Um, uh, about Ms. Fraser's program, um, she was just recognized here uh, recently. Uh, she has the most. Uh, Microsoft Office certification. She's the second most in the state. Um, so they sent her a, a letter thanking her for her hard efforts and the number of students that we had passed their Microsoft Office um, certification. And we had two students that worked on several projects for the uh, West Virginia SSAC um, to do a cover uh, design for uh, in the areas of soccer um, was Hannah Hale and then Logan Vance uh, wanted at the state level for golf. And these are all Miss Frazier's kids. Uh, she does a wonderful job with them. Um, I don't know if maybe she, she's young and she has a good connection with the, with the students, uh, but now they, they're really uh, a go-getter punch. Um, on the next topic is a digital festival. Uh, we had an opportunity to send uh, a variety of our students to Marshall and uh, they put on an event that dealt with coding, programming, robotics, and then the last one there is eSports. eSports is something new, and uh, it's, it'll be run through the uh, Department of Ed, and, and I've been working with them for a little bit over the last, probably, well, since back in the summer. Um, and on the next page it tells a little bit about eSports. Um, Esports, um, there's a game out there called uh, League of Legends, and uh, if you ever remember that back in the older days when the games first came out, you had the Dungeons and the Dragons. Um, I don't know if that was on like Atari or uh, on a computer or what. No, no. It's, it's been around for, it's been around for a while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, it, it's similar to that. Um, basically, we have a uh, uh, come up with a team, uh, five to seven members on a team. Uh, now, the state is going to promote this, and the good thing to us is what's it going to cost us? It's not going to cost a thing. Uh, they're going to take care of us. And uh, the team doesn't have to be all CTE students, and, uh, and we can have more than one team, which is, which is a nice thing. There's no travel involved because the kids will just use uh, Mr. Harshbarger. It'll be run out of, through his program, and uh, he's actually going to be the uh, the coach for this. And uh, so he's working with the kids, and, and, uh, and we've been working with uh, uh, Tim Elliott, who is over uh, Project Lead the Way and stuff at the state now. Uh, this is going to be like a, a full blown sport in the uh, 2021 school year, and uh, kids have an opportunity to do uniforms and, and stuff. Um, Couple of the meetings I've been to, um, they set up, um, you know, with their with their game and their computer screen. And the kids sitting there with a, a 40 inch monitor, you know, sitting in a nice chair, keyboard, and a, you know, look like he's got a mouse that you know belongs in a race car or something. I mean, it's these kids just go way out and, and spend a lot of money on things. Uh, but you can also play this sport and just have the basics, uh, which is just a good computer and uh, a good mouse and a, and a keyboard and a headset and the kids will play against other um, schools throughout the state and the only time that they don't have to travel or go somewhere would be at the end of the season would, would be a championship game um, and it's all gaming it's all online uh, and they can have you can have several different games going on at the same time um, i think it'll, it'll be a good thing for our kids to get involved in because we always want our kids to participate in things at school so they can have that connection um, and, and I think we uh, we were one of the first ones that uh, already had a team put together and uh, ready to get it. 
you've seen this on television. And yes. There's, and there's like large audiences. People come to watch. Yes. Watch and we can, we can do that too. Uh, you can set it up and streamline it on a big TV and have it playing while somebody's sitting over here on the computer playing the game. Um, it is, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of money that people have been poured into this, over the, at least over the last year or two. Um, and we've had a couple connections um, of bringing some folks in that actually competed at the uh, national level with this. So hopefully they'll come in and talk with their kids and um, uh, it'll be a good thing for them. It is, it is. Uh, the next one, there's the Appalachian Regional Council. Um, Dr. Joby Lawrence, she came, and uh, she's out of Fairfax, uh, Virginia. She came and visited with us, and uh, you know their mission there is to, to innovate, partner, and invest to build communities, capacities, and strengthen economies and growth in the Appalachian area. She sends me an email out of the blue after she came and visited with us, and says she loved the uh, everything we have going on at Lincoln County High School. She'd been to five other different schools. Uh, but they, she didn't, she didn't connect with the kids like she really connected with our, our students. Um, so upon that, she's asked to uh, uh, work a little bit. She wants to do a uh, just a short documentary um, about what what we're doing in, in rural education. Um, she has asked asked me um, to come and and uh, and Miss Fry to come to uh, Florida at the national uh, conference and do a presentation on what we do at Lincoln County High School. Um, so I told her that we would be glad to come and do that. Uh, and so we've been actually working on putting some things together. And uh, most of this will be paid for through them uh, with the help of, of uh, Mr. King back here. I appreciate um, him helping us out with a little bit of money to take care of uh, Jessica's travel with the with paper for part of ours, but not the whole thing. Uh, I think it'll be a it'll be a good a good opportunity. And on the next page there, it was just uh, when the conference is. I just put a little note in there that uh, you know, Dr. D'Antoni uh, actually you know calls me and out of the blue, and anytime she calls me, honey, I, I I know she's wanting me to do something. And she's like, I've got this opportunity for you to. Uh, uh, Share what's going on Lincoln County High School with a lot of folks in the, around the around the U.S. That's something you'd want to do. And I said, Well, I, I said, Yeah. I said, I'd love to. And she said, Well, I was hoping you were going to, but sorry, put you on the agenda <laughs> for them. So I'm like, Okay, we'll run with it. Um, next page there is uh, an MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, we'd applied um, for a grant with the help of uh, Mike McCormick. And we're going to do a collaborative effort. We actually won this grant, and we've been working, uh, the students have, some of our ag students, with some of uh, Mr. Harshberg's Project Lead Away students, and with our computer science side of it. And uh, they have an opportunity to, to design and build something out of that hopefully you could market it and sell. Um, their design is an automated high tunnel. And so far, they've got the design is about as big as. About, about as big as uh, one of these tables. And uh, this summer, June the 19th through the 21st, um, they're going to go to MIT and present or showcase their invention. And uh, he told me the other day we had to buy a little, maybe $10,000 for the grant. They've got seven of it left right now after uh, uh, spending about $3,000 on their mini uh, scale model that they're going to actually take with them and, and use. So this would be a good opportunity for our kids to get out and see things um, differently than what they would see around here. Um, on the next page there, advanced careers. We've got an opportunity to uh, take our CTE and combine it with AP and offer some classes. Um, CT instructor does not have to teach the classes, and uh, basically it could be anybody that's certified in math or science. They prefer if you have both, um, which we have a gentleman that, that has both, David Agat, 
um, possibly <coughs> take, take this on. And uh, it's something, it's been out there for, for a few years and there's uh, about five or six schools in the state that offer this. Um, it consists of four courses and the students learn to work in teams, think creatively, identify problems, design and test their solution. Their task uh, would include, I looked up a couple of the, the projects that they have to do. Uh, one is the science of survival, clean up your own water supply, design and build an earthquake proof shelter. All of this is project based. So they, they give them an idea, they have to come up with a solution. They have to actually build a model and test their theory and gather data on it. Um, so it's, it's critical thinking. Um, and it is a mixture, like I said, between your, your CTE with the, all your hands-on stuff and your AP, which is your higher level thinking. And uh, students will actually earn a, a certificate when they uh, finish all four courses. I'm in the process of working with the, uh, the State Department and hopefully they will let us offer a embedded science credit or two with these four courses. Because when I looked at it, and I shared with them last week, it is it's very heavily on uh, physics and it's got a huge component of chemistry in it. And, and I would think if the kids you know, took this over a period of two years that they could get credit and they are looking at that, that's possibly something that uh, I'll work out here soon and let me know. But uh, any any of the students that go through this that think about a career in engineering, uh, for example, um, this would be the students that would probably end up taking these classes. Um, because of the, the, the level that you have to think yet, you kind of have to think outside the box. Um, I requested a grant for $50,000. Um, I'm going to get that grant. $50,000 to do this with. Um, and it's to be run over four years. We don't have to hire an extra teacher because we're going to use uh, one of our science instructors, David Aggins, has graciously volunteered to do this. Um, and the $50,000 will cover for me to send him to any type of training that he needs. And then uh, roughly you have $40,000 or a little more to buy all the materials that we need. Some of the stuff we already have because of our science classes. Um, so we might be able to stretch this out money-wise a little bit farther than um, some folks would if they just start this uh, day. If you remember Stan Hopkins, he, he's the seller. He's like, I think you've got to go to an opportunity here. We can, we can do something other for your kid. Um, hopefully, I'm going to see how this works out, and if this works out, to be a, a good um, program for our kids is possibly next year maybe looking at offering uh, health informatics uh, because it takes in the, the health side of it um, and it's like office work and different uh, areas um, and, and within one big realm I guess like the big umbrella. Uh, next page, uh, just some things going on that we've done uh, with, the, with our community. Um, LCHS Farms, you know, we did a couple auctions. They've been involved with Apple Butter, the Fair, the Pumpkin Festival, FFA Week. Sort of started last week. We kind of carried it over this week because we were out a couple days and the kids uh, just didn't seem to be, you know, fair to them, but cut it a few days short. So we extended that through this week uh, for those students to be able to do some of the things that they originally had planned to do. Um, our Prowling Panther Preschool, which is our ECE program, they're, they're continuing working on our practicum, their portfolios, and their ECAN certification. Uh, our Panther Way Healthcare, uh, Ms. Elkins' program, uh, they're back doing their clinicals with St. Mary's. That's been a, that's, that has been a wonderful thing for these kids. Um, every time they go, they come back, they share stories with me. Um, we've had one or two that's changed their mind because they're like, I just don't think that the health field nursing is going to be my cup of tea. However, I have seen a couple other jobs that we've actually got to job shadow, and I think I could do that. Uh, so that's the, you know, that's the things that we want to see come out of this. These kids know that we're going to spend all this time in, in a specific area and then not, you know, like it. Um, they did their blood drives, and um, now they're working with the uh, 
the nursing home over here, Lincoln Nursing, uh, they're going to be going up and, and doing some stuff um, so that they can get a direct care certification. So uh, Matt has agreed to let us come up and do that. Um, LC Auto, um, I was telling you about the, the internship there that we got. They're, they're still, as the kids say, we're still changing on, inspecting stickers and doing whatever needs to be done to your vehicle. Um, our carpentry students, um, they've been doing some stuff around the school that's been pretty good. One of the things um, I'd like to thank Dr. Lowe back here for helping out is our kids came and said, you know, Mr. Miller, we, our greenhouse has, you know, all the gravel in it. Um, we would like to do something with that and make that the floor um, smoother, possibly concrete, um, just to make it a little more accessible for several of our, our peers. And I was like, I, that'd be something we could possibly look at. Well, I think they took that step further and with the help of Dr. Lowe, uh, they have poured half of the greenhouse closest to the school, moved the gravel out, and uh, they have half of it to concrete right now. So it's, it's, it's a big, for them it's been really exciting because they're doing something other than when they leave, that it, it's there if they when they come back out had a hand in doing that. Um, and for other kids it's going to be really exciting for them to be able to get out and back uh, a lot easier. Uh, Panther Publishing, I shared with some stuff, they've been doing a lot of programs and flyers, and tickets, you, you name it, they've been doing it, anything that they can you know, put out there and help with the community and sell. Uh, legions of computers, um, they've been doing a lot of uh, repairing on some older computers, replacing some batteries, they've been doing some iPads, and one of the things that uh, uh, the kids are really enjoying is uh, some of our computers are like really outdated and old, so instead of throwing them away, they've been uh, refurbishing them and they give them to a few of our students in the building uh, that can't afford a, a computer but need one or would like to have one. So they've been helping out doing that. Um, LCHS Peacemakers, Brian, uh, Lawrence's class. Uh, they did a big thing with the fingerprint. And kids really enjoyed that. And they've been doing a variety of other things, like um, you know, poor old Annie, they throwed her off the second floor over there, I don't know how many times, and uh, created a crime scene. Uh, but now they've, uh, I think, Huh? Who's Andy? Andy, it's the dummy. Okay. It's the dummy. So ninth graders. Ninth graders. So I think I'm going to, ha I'm going to have to get them a new one. Um, I think we've they about exhausted that one over the last almost three years. Uh, however, last week I was at the uh, CTE winter conference, and uh, uh, I aimed to secure a grant for him of uh, $10,000 that should be coming here shortly. And that is to upgrade his simulator um, because we initially had bought it, but a few of the other pieces that we needed uh, were fairly expensive. Um, so I think the, the $10,000 is going to give us now the opportunity to be able to buy those extra pieces of equipment uh, for our students to use. Um, straight A fabrication and welding. The CNC machines up and running. Uh, they wish they'd had that back when we had the street fair, but I think they're going to uh, be able to do a lot of good things with them. Uh, the kids now are uh, seeing a connection, and Jamie's did a wonderful job of being able to sit down with them and look at the math that they need to use with that. And, and he's actually been doing some uh, um, looking in, I guess, work. And we've had Larry too, Harshbarger, which is familiar with CAD. So he, they've actually teamed up and been doing some uh, uh, cross-curriculum there, I guess, um, working together and cre uh, creating things uh, like the state. So now they know how to inlay a, an object and be able to put things over top of it and it cut it out like it's supposed to. Uh, but now it's been a, a real learning uh, curve for them. But uh, as you can see now, I think they've got it down pat. Um, one of the things that we uh, that the kids wanted to do this year, and we did a uh, treat and meet for Halloween. I think that was a big success. We had a lot of, uh, I don't know, we probably had three or four hundred uh, middle school to grade school students that came by the high school. Um, each one of the programs set up an area to treat the kids. This was an opportunity for them to get in the young folks in the county 
Um, because a lot of times if you talk to some other parents that don't have kids at the school, they don't have a clue about what we have going on. Um, nobody shared anything with them. So this gave an opportunity for them to come in and the kids um, you know, treat them and then be able to walk through the building and see some of the things that we have going on and some of the projects. And it was not only just focused with the, with the CTE, it was also for them to look and see um, other things um, beyond that, like some of the classrooms, AP classes, um, some of our uh, student government folks and things um, that they, I feel, need to know about. Um, on the next page there, we have the adult welding up and running at, at the high school now. Jamie's teaching three classes of that. He's doing the WO-103, the WO-100, and the 102. Um, right now, we currently have eight students um, that's involved um, with this, and they have class on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays after school. Um, The, uh, the picture up above, that's our CNC plasma cutting. Uh, I kind of took a picture and put that in it to give you kind of an idea of how, how that thing operates a little bit. And, um, and the next picture over is actually Mingo Central students. I've been networking with some of our other um, counties around us that have some programs that are, are very good. Um, and we've had an opportunity to send some of our kids several places, um, as well as bringing some other folks from different schools here. Uh, they actually came down and spent the biggest part of one day, these two students and, uh, and their instructor, um, with the welding class and helped them understand how that CNC machine operates. And they brought some ideals and things like that down for them. Um, the next page there is our carpentry. Uh, they just finished, recently finished a, a storage shed. Um, they're still doing a lot of stuff at Beach Fork. Um, those folks love us over there. One thing I'm trying to work with them uh, now at the state department level is that because the West Virginia Department of Ed was pushing this initiative with the CTE to um, park renovation, that our students are having an opportunity to go over and work and do things that hopefully in the end they could get something out of it, some type of cer certificate or uh, you know connection with the job placement um, or just anything. Um, but they have worked on finishing uh, their OSHA 10 and their CPR. Uh, recently, I'm uh, saying it took some students up to the Carpenters Union in January to take a tape test. And as a result of that, I haven't uh, got feedback from him. I think we actually got to go back up and have a few more students to, uh, to take the test that uh, I maybe administer something before. Um, but if the if our students score a certain level on it, these guys will give them an interview. Um, we had several students that uh, did really well last year, and they, they snatched them out. And the guys are working. So it's, a, it's, it's been a good connection with them. Um, next page um, is the greenhouse. And as I was saying earlier there, we got about half of it finished. They did an upgrade. Um, we're going to work on a, uh, maybe the weather to improve just a little bit. And there's one of the projects from Beach Ford. They, they learned to do the fire pits, build retaining wall. And they've got some other projects going on. They, they told me that they uh, wanted to come back and pour some concrete uh, as soon as the weather warms up enough for them to uh, get over and do that. And then they've got a couple other projects going on that they'll, they'll be part of as well. Our Vex Robotics. Um, They've been competing and, and doing a, a wonderful job. Um, there's an example of our uh, of Marshall University uh, competition. And then we've been working with the middle schools and bringing the students over uh, for the robotics team. Um, we actually made the news. And that's uh, Mr. Jordan there in the background in the yellow. And we were working on developing a uh, I think we've got some grant money that we're going to do it. Well, there's a big push for this way for an all-girls robotics team. Um, so we're eventually getting ready to start uh, start with that. 
Uh, next page is some pictures of uh, you know, our simulated workplace um, students wearing their uniforms and doing the things that they need to do. Uh, these are the, uh, the seniors. They're actually at St. Mary's. And on days that they go, they wear their uniforms and their IDs and so forth. Um, the juniors have been being able to spend some time um, at the Lincoln Nursing Home. Um, they're working on additional blood drive coming up. They, they did the, uh, the OSHA 10, the food drive. And then on the, on the right hand side of the page there towards the bottom, you see their, uh, their clinicals. Um, they actually dress them up for whatever area they're going into. They make it as, as realistic for them as they can. Um, and that's pretty good. I, I love to hear the stories when they come back. And then up to the top there on the right hand side is Mingo Central Visit. I've uh, sent some students down there uh, because they have a wonderful uh, program with their therapeutic service students. Uh, so they went down and brainstormed and shared some ideas and, and uh, the students came back and I knew when they come back it was going to cost me because they, they actually come in and sit down and say, Mr. Miller, we need, we need to talk with you for a few minutes. Anytime they come in and pull up a chair, I'd say it's going to cost. So, which wasn't too bad, it was just a little bit of pain. I found them a desk and uh, uh, things that they needed to, to make their area more realistic. Uh, next page is uh, LCH Peacemakers. They actually got invited to go up to the uh, Minority Expo in Charleston. Put on a, uh, they set up and did an exhibit of their, uh, of their program, um, along with uh, several other programs we had that actually went up. Project Lead the Way went. Uh, Ms. Frazier took uh, some of her students up and they set up for uh, people to come and uh, look at. Uh, we are out and about. A lot of, a lot of folks have seen us over the say, last few years, um, which, which is a good thing. Uh, on the right there is an example of uh, Jessica doing the, uh, the fingerprinting. Uh, this was at the Treat and Meet. We ordered um, fingerprinting kits, and all of our young um, st or kids that showed up for the, uh, the Trick or Treat um, Brian's kids actually sat down with them, did the fingerprinting, put it on a chart, labeled it, and gave it to the parents as a way for them to uh, just put a picture with it in case something would ever happen to the kids. So it was kind of given back, and, and that actually happened to turn out to be a, a fabulous uh, event for them. They were tired at the end, um, but they really liked it. And they liked it so well, we did it twice. We did it once at the high school when we did the treat me. And then when they actually treated uh, Morris Hollow, it just, you were rude. Sean. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So they were up there in the corner and uh, and, do, and did it again. I tried to catch some of the others, but they uh, didn't get a chance to when, they, when the kids come over for the high school. Um, they worked on the, the CPR the first day. Um, Brian's got them a police cruiser over there. Um, they use it to do a lot of mock. Uh, pullovers, takedowns, um, all the lights and everything worked on it. Um, their simulator, uh, that's been a real big hit. I think it's going to help with recruiting. Everybody that comes to see this loves it. And hopefully with the additional $10,000 that, uh, that I received there last week, uh, we can do some upgrades to it. And then we had one of our students that actually got on the state superintendent's um, task force, which was uh, Shay Hudak. Shay is actually in the uh, Minority Expo picture. She's the student on the, uh, the far left. <coughs> and one of, the, the, one of her tasks this year, of being on, that, uh, on the superintendent's task force, was to come up with why students don't come to school and issues. So she, she did some research and talked with uh, her peers and so forth. And then we had several meetings with the state superintendent. And she got to share her ideas along with um, other folks from different CTE. Uh, either centers or schools around. Uh, so that was that was a big accomplishment for her. And then on the last page there is the, uh, the treat and meet, and uh, that's actually uh, Miss Elkins' students on the left. Uh, they did a thing called Candyland, so they got their kids to come, to come in. And, uh, one of the things we did was we handed out like an information pamphlet um, to the parents, and they did everything from our uh, you, know, you see you kids of how to properly wash your hands to safety. Um, and then through Joe and uh, they shared different ideas and different 
things that uh, the parents could use just to be be more healthier and, uh, uh, throughout. And they gave candy away. And, uh, it ended up being a real good evening for us. I am impressed. I'm okay. sorry for coming today. I didn't expect this. Okay. I tried to surprise when I came. It's a surprise. Yeah. Matt, have we uh, got any data on following up these kids after they graduate? Yes. Are we improving? Yes. Yeah. Now, this year we're actually going to have a um, hundred, I think we're going to have 138 completers this year. Yeah. So the, our, that number has increased as well. Yeah. As far as uh, the job placement, um, that's, that's increased. Because one of the things is after the kids graduate, is for initially uh, the first year is uh, we have to track them, keep in touch with them, see what they're doing. Uh, some of our kids actually have just went directly to work and making, you know, real good money. Um, and one of the students, I've had several students come back and and, uh, and talk to our other students about you know, stuff that they did, how that's helped them once they got out in the real world. Um, a lot of the things that we do with our simulated workplace. One of our students, Sean, who had, had left, and he went and got a job, and he said, Mr. Miller, kick the death. They started me out $28 an hour. It was welding. He said, as soon as they found out I could do this, this, and this, because he was also in our act program, he said, they moved me to $30 an hour. I said, well, that's great. You're doing better than I am. And he started laughing. He said, but no, the story gets better. I said, well, tell you something, $31.50. Right now, they gave me a truck. <laughs> I said, well, son, I'm, I'm proud of you. I give you a pat on the back. And I said, I said, did you upgrade? Because when he was with us, every time he turned around at the end of school, he was working on his truck trying to get it started. And he says, well, no, my whole truck still runs. <laughs> and I said, well, I just kind of wondered if you would upgrade. But, uh, but he had not, so he was saving his money wisely. I hope they realize that one of the reasons they can get a job is because they're drug free. Yes. Now, that means you. How often do you drug test for children? How's it going? How often do you drug test? Oh, uh, we've been doing it once a month. Once a month. That when yeah. you, when they yeah. the whole yeah. they're all together. Yeah. Okay. Very impressive, Matt. Oh, it's Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, how many hour days you work? <laughs> I stay busy. Yeah. I, I stay busy. Get lots of phone calls. I actually got a phone call today from some, uh, uh, Brook County. I wanted to come down and see, uh, come and visit us and see, uh, uh, project Lead the Way and uh, Law and Public Safety. I got a call last Friday from some folks down in Kentucky who wanted to share some stuff with them. So we're out there. People know who we are now. And our kids are, are being recognized. And the folks out in the workforce know that. So now they're hopefully like, they keep contact with us and we get those kids where they need to be. Working because I'd like to retire one day. Okay, Sounds good. Now, just the comprehensiveness of what you are doing and you all are doing in terms of not just the individual programs but the interaction between those programs, mm -hmm. the promotion, the real world experience these kids getting this is phenomenal. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, things going back and forth between. You know, the different classes we've teamed up, you know, like our carpentry, they've been working with the ag, and, you know, Project Lead the Way with the welding, um, and then Ms. Frazier's kids and other things. I um, mean, it's, it's, it's been good, and it's, it's changed. Our, our, our climate within the building, if you, if you walk through, it's, it's different from what it used to be. And I think the kids see that you know, we're there you know, for them and, and to help them. Uh, there's a lot of other people that's, have noticed that, too, when they can. That's good. It's a good thing. Okay, well, thank you. Man. You're welcome. Nice job, man. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to administrative items. Do I have a motion, please? Yeah, I'm ready. Madam Secretary. Item A is out of state travel for the following degrees. <coughs> Item B, school volunteers who on occasion may also serve as bus chaperones for athletic events, academic competitions, or school outings, and have completed volunteer orientation. 
MC is in agreement with Aaron Gibson to provide transportation services for a Midway Elementary student for the 2018-2019 school year. AMD, out-of-state trip for Guyon Valley Middle School 8th grade students to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, May the 29th through the 31st, 2019, transport by charter bus. <coughs> Item E, uh, out-of-state trip for Wayne County High School students to Colorado and Utah for the Stand Watch Young Entrepreneur Expedition. And we need to change the date. Um, we just got an email from the uh, instructor, and it's going to be March the 30th through April the 6th, 2019. Item F, to accept the lowest qualified bid from Fairfax Incorporated, totaling $142,100 for Duval roof replacement. Uh, Mr. Gosney uh, provided you with a letter. He addressed it to Mr. Priestley and members of the board for you to see. This was a small section of uh, the existing roof over there that wasn't included in the original project. Uh, so this will um, complete the entire roof of Duval. Other than the gymnasium, according to Mr. Gosney, that's a newer roof and, and should be good for a number of years to come. So, And this will finish out the funding that we have left in the SBA account for uh, the uh, six roofing projects from earlier in the year. Item G, according to the provisions of County Policy 8210 School Calendar and West Virginia Code 18-5-45, the following revisions to the 2018-2019 school calendar are approved as a result of school cancellation for the work stoppage. So March the 22nd and May, or March the 25th for uh, OS days, those will now become instructional days. And we still have two OS days remaining in the calendar and a uh, professional meeting day that's remaining. So if we were to be out for inclement weather or for whatever reasons, we still have three opportunities to make those days up. And that's all. Okay. Is that an all yes vote? Yes. 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 Who's your finance? So moved. Second. <coughs> Item A, schedule of invoices totaling $111,760.21. Attachment invoicement uh, invoices are available for public view at the county office. The county pension for the following retired employee paid out of excess levy, Susan Mishler, uh, and she picked uh, the bill. Uh, Anybody got any questions? Oh, yes. 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 Okay, comments and concerns. Any board members got anything? Mr. Mickett? The uh, water outage at Ranger Elementary. Uh, we've been in uh, close communication with uh, the Mickip or branch of the Mickip PSD, as well as the local health department, uh, trying to formulate, come up with a plan uh, for our students at Ranger. It's our understanding that it may be days, and Sean, you may know more about this than I do, but it's my understanding it could be days uh, before the repairs going to be made on that water line. Somewhere either going into the river or coming out or possibly in the river itself. Uh, it's not, doesn't sound good at all. Uh, we, we kicked around here yesterday a lot of ideas. We looked at the possibility of bringing students here, bringing them to Guy Valley's, dividing them up between Hearts, West Hamlin. None of those scenarios really work for us. You know, they could be a difficult thing to try to pull off. Um, what we're doing is we are going to take a portable 1,500-gallon water tank to Ranger Elementary. As a matter of fact, maintenance is working on it now um, to provide water to the school. And if this all goes according to our plan and, and the work that, or the conversations that we've had with the uh, health department as well as the state department with child nutrition, if this all works out, we feel like we may be able to have school uh, Thursday. So we've got some, some work to do. We've got to make sure everything uh, works the way we think it's going to. Greg, Gosney, 
uh, the way you described it to me this morning is that it should function just as if we had the city water coming into the building. We'll, we'll tap into the existing line outside and be able to pump water into that building. And then each evening we'll, we'll take that tank and we'll set it in the back of our dump truck that we have. And either take it to the Branchland PSD location to fill up the tank <coughs> or it was suggested to us that we take it to West Ham if they have a, a larger line down there to refill the tank. So that is our plan. I wanted to share that with you and you know, see if you have any questions uh, about what we're going to be doing. Try to make be furnish them drinking water. Drinking bottled water. water. Yes. yes, we will provide them with bottled water to drink. So this water you're putting in the school is a potable. Is it, is it sanitary, is it safe for drinking just for hand washing, commode washing, right. cooking will be done with bottled water, et cetera, yes. or? Yes. Okay. yes, that's what we're going to be doing. Like I said, the health department's working with us. Did you hear? Yes. Well, now, I, I missed the part there. What, what was, how are you going to provide for the uh, toilets and things like that? What did you say? The, the water that will come from the uh, tank that we're going to have on site will provide water for commodes, sinks, um, we'll actually, according to Greg, will supply the entire school. I, I missed the tank part, sir. Have you uh, always looked into that? Or, or got to the point where you are going to look for one, or have you obtained one? Like the tank yes, we we have purchased a tank. Uh, I, I believe by now it's in our possession. Um, oh, okay. okay. Yes, as so, well as a pump. Matthew, uh, Mr. Curry, have asked this. Uh, once the tank is in place, how does it get filled up? We will have to transport the tank. Our our folks, uh, our maintenance department, will take to get water in it. Well, we will fill it up at uh, at West Salem at the water company at West Salem or at the. Oh, okay. They okay. have. Yeah, and you we just if uh, as it needed to be refilled, they would just have to. Take it somewhere and refill it, or what? Yes, we'll refill it every every day, every evening after the students leave. Uh, now, what would that entail? Would that mean you have to take it down there, or you bring it to something to go with it? No, uh, we'll have to haul the tank uh, okay. to to either the Branchland Mid Kid PSD site or the uh, West Sandlin site. Well, it's going to stay on the truck. Yeah. But it's on it. We have, a, you know, we've got this dump truck now that we've had for a couple right. of years, right. and uh, we're, right. it's just going to sit on the back of that truck. Okay, well, that sounds good. That's a good plan, I think. Okay, that's all I, have. I just want to clarify. Okay, thank you. Okay, you got anything else? No, that's all I have. And I'll let you know. Of course, now, the end of this, no, we had one last week and then uh, our posting was supposed to go down because of the work stoppage we had to extend it so we didn't have any. <coughs> we'll have one too. Since we have a meeting, it's like a bird. Nothing further, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So many. Mr. Wilson? Mr. Baker? Yes. Is that an all yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, next Tuesday.